Very rare positive sign in the Yemen civil war. This footage showing the first relief aid reaching the key port city of Hodeida today after a ceasefire there was agreed to by the Saudi-backed and uh, by the Saudi-backed government and Iranian-supported Houthi rebels. That was at UN-mediated peace negotiations in Sweden. Now that aid is desperately needed to avert a catastrophic famine and a cholera epidemic that has been sparked by the conflict. Here's what the deputy head of the Houthi delegation to those peace talks had to say today. In general, the talks address the main issues, including the political processes as well as the security and military arrangements. They also addressed what we called confidence-building measures. These included the economic file, Hodeida, Taez, and Sana'a Airport. We consider the Sana'a delegation's presence in Sweden to be the first step on the road to peace. We sent a message to the world saying that we are for peace with honesty, transparency, and clarity. Well, for more on the Yemen situation, let's go to Washington and speak with Hardin Lang. He's vice president for programs and policy at Refugees International. And he's also a veteran of several UN humanitarian uh, missions. And Hardin, surely a positive sign here. But let's be clear, this is a ceasefire only at, for now at the Hodeida port. How confident or, or not are you that this can serve as a basis really to end the uh, Yemen conflict? Look, I, just the first thing to say is this is an extremely important uh, first step, if not second step. It's quite remarkable uh, that uh, the U.N. negotiator was able to get to a point where we're looking at uh, a ceasefire, not just in Hadeda port, but in the city and possibly the government as a whole. Uh, Hadeda, as you said, is absolutely essential for getting humanitarian assistance in here, so the significance of this agreement can't be understated. That said, we're a, a long way from being out of the woods. Um, the, this agreement calls for basically a demilitarization and a withdrawal of forces both on the government side and on the Houthi rebel side from the port uh, over the next three weeks or so. And uh, fulfilling that, uh, that obligation is going to be a very uh, tough road to hoe, I think, for both parties. Um, and we have to really sort of monitor that carefully and see how it's happening. At the same time, as those forces pull back, the UN system is going to have to ramp up the amount of humanitarian assistance coming into that port in what was likely to still be a reasonably dynamic security environment. So there are a lot of, uh, of steps still to be taken, but this is an incredibly important first one. All right. Well, Hardin, uh Stay with us, because one element in the Yemen conflict, of course, has been the Trump administration's support for Saudi Arabia's involvement in this mm -hmm. conflict. That's a policy that received really a stunning rebuke in Congress yesterday when the Senate voted in favor of a resolution to end any U.S. support for the Riyadh-led Yemen coalition. Here's the resolution's main backer, Senator Bernie Sanders. We have brought Republicans and Democrats together in a very historical moment. And what that moment is about is that the Senate this afternoon stated that we will not continue participation in the Saudi-led intervention in Yemen, which has resulted in the worst humanitarian crisis on earth. Now, Harden, of course, is a non-binding resolution, but how significant is mm -hmm. the fact that the Senate did take this step? I mean, politically, it's tremendous, right? I mean, it's a political earthquake in the sense that you've got the Senate with bipartisan support exercising its authority under the War Powers Resolution uh, and to actually see uh, uh, a vote against the continuation of support for a strategic ally in the United States, of the United States, uh, in the war in Yemen. Uh, and so I think that sends a very strong political signal to the White House and to others that in Congress there is bipartisan support to move away uh, from supporting this war. That said, it's still a long way to go before we could actually see uh, a legal impact of this resolution. Um, the, it appears that the House is not going to take up this resolution in this Congress. And as soon as we get a new Congress in next year, there's a very good chance that this vote will have to go, this bill will have to go back to both the Senate and the House for approval. And there's a very real question about whether or not it could survive a veto at the hands of President Trump, who has indicated his intention to veto the legislation. But all that said, it's still a significantly, uh, uh, politically, it's an incredibly important moment uh, in, this, in this campaign.
And Hardin, the man who is really seen as the key backer or instigator of the Saudi involvement in the Yemen conflict is the Crown mm -hmm. Prince uh, uh, Mohammed bin Salman. How does what is happening in Yemen link up to the problems, the situation that MBS is facing over the murder of Jamal Khashoggi? I mean, there's no question that the sort of political momentum on this, uh, on the Hill and elsewhere, really began to shift with uh, the assassination of Khashoggi. Uh, that killing, the way in which it was carried out, uh, uh, and and the role that the, the uh, Crown Prince allegedly played in it clearly has shifted opinions, not just uh, uh, with respect to Saudi Arabia involved in these kind of human rights violations, but also uh, with respect to the war in Yemen. So we see a number of issues coming into question and a number of policies coming into question in response to uh, the targeted killing. And so I think the two are very much interlinked in terms of why this is getting, why the war in Yemen is getting the kind of attention that it's getting uh, in Congress at the moment. And uh, Hardin, just to clarify the severity of the situation, mm -hmm. if we do not see an end to the conflict, really it's just Hodeida and maybe even a temporary ceasefire, what are the potential consequences for the citizens, the civilians there in Yemen? Look, the, it's very clear, uh, the most recent reports that have come out of the UN and uh, other uh, humanitarian actors point to uh, a real sort of uh, a trend line moving towards famine at an accelerated rate. For the first time a couple of weeks ago, we had a report come out that said 65,000 Yemenis are actually in famine, and that the number of those who were facing acute food shortages had moved from 14 million to o almost 16 million. So what we're beginning to see is the real turn into a potential famine. So uh, the stakes really couldn't be higher uh, for the people of Yemen. This is why the opening of the port uh, and uh, a cessation of hostilities around the port will be absolutely essential to be making progress on the humanitarian front and why the, deal, why the deal in Sweden was so significant. All right, well, of course, this conflict has been going on for a number of years. It finally seems to be getting some traction both in the media and in the international community, and it appears in Washington there is finally action being taken on it and maybe uh, couldn't have come st uh, too soon for, as you point out, the people in Yemen, Hard and Lang of Refugees International.